Web personalization is something that not a lot of people know about or are doing, but it is absolutely critical if you have a sizable website visitor traffic load and you want to be able to hit everybody with the right message and not just one headline that gets most people, but everybody. I had Eric Melkor from Optimunk on the show. He's an expert at this and he explained how you can make sure that you're maximizing your website visitors so that you can hit them with the right notes that get them really emotional and get them converted. Check this episode out. I think you're going to find a lot of interesting nuggets here. Welcome to Sastery in the Making, the podcast that features the people who made the software world what it is today and the leaders who are shaping the future of technology. Here's your host, Matt Wallach. Hey, welcome to Sastery in the Making. So glad to have you here. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks for watching. If you're on YouTube, thanks for listening. If you are on the podcast, my name is Matt, and my goal is to help software companies grow and scale, achieve an amazing valuation, and eventually an incredible exit. And today, I'm super excited to help you with that. I've got Eric Melkor here with me. Eric, welcome to the show. Hey, great to be here, Matt. Absolutely. So excited to have you. Let me make sure I tell everybody about you, Eric. Eric is the personalization ambassador at Optimunk and really doing awesome stuff there. I can't wait to dive in. He's also a host of a podcast himself, Innovators Can Laugh. So definitely check that out also. And, you know, really, he's worked for customer personalization obsessed startups like Bonjoro and now Optimunk, and he's co providing mentoring for SaaS companies who are starting partnership marketing channels or want to create personalized shopping experiences with ease. He is obsessed with building and strengthening relationships as well. And he's providing guidance on how to start and scale partner programs for Euro-based startups primarily and small and medium businesses. And from what I hear, he's a mediocre tennis player. I guess he's a little bit better than that. But Eric, welcome <laughs> to the show. Hey, pleasure to be here, Matt. Yeah, let's uh, get into personalization and other topics that you want to get into while you have me here. I'm super excited to hear all about that. But first, just tell me what's going on with you lately at Optimunk. I want to hear what's coming up. Oh God, so many good things. I mean, Optimunk is is kind of known as this pop-up platform, but we've been around since 2014 and have just grown tremendously. And now we've turned into this really robust personal, personalization platform uh, that gives the tools to SMBs, to you know, e-commerce stores, SaaS companies, any kind of brand that wants to create a marvelous digital shopping experience, one that can be personalized to different segments. What does that mean though? You know, what does that mean to personalize different segments? Well, it means that you're serving different content to different people based on their interests and behavior. So wow. it sounds maybe a little futuristic, maybe twilight zone, but it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. And uh, I'm here to, you know, share a few different, you know, examples, quick tips, use cases, just, you know, tell you more about it. Yeah, I'm super excited to learn more about it. it sounds super cutting edge. But first, I just kind of want to know how did how did Optimunk come to be? What what was the foundation of that? Yeah, so it's founded by uh, Shaba Jado. He's Hungarian, so hence the name Shaba. And uh, Shaba initially created the Shopify for the Hungarian market, and over forty thousand customers began using the platform. And during that process, he was able to learn a lot about e-commerce and a lot about just the digital shopping experience in general. And so he created this other tool on the side where it was really meant as an excellent intent trigger pop-up and uh, companies loved it. Brands loved it. And so they started asking for more. Can you do this? Can you make this? Can you help us, you know, with our lead generation? What tools can you provide? Do you have any guidance on uh, how to get user feedback on cart abandonment? And so it turned into all these different tools that can help brands build their email lists, increase conversions. But then he started noticing that, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are obsessed with conversion rate optimization. And I think uh, most listeners probably know what that is. If you don't, it's about these little tactics that you can do to really increase the conversions on your website. Maybe a conversion is getting an email sign up. Maybe it's getting somebody to purchase a product. Uh, maybe it's getting somebody to download a white paper. So there's these little tricks that you can do. But some of those tricks, these little quick wins, <clears throat> they're really, really at the cost of the entire shopping experience. And they sacrifice just sort of that long-term loyalty that you want from a person. And so they started thinking, how can we, how can we shift our platform into a customer value optimization model, which is thinking about every step along the journey. And instead of trying to get something from the customer, give something to the customer, you know, give value, give education, 
help them every step along the way. And that's where uh, the new platform 3.0 is, uh, is basically is, is been reborn. Optimunk has been reborn now into this new personalization platform. I, I love that. And can you kind of dive into that? So you talked about web personalization, gave us kind of a brief snippet on what it is, but I really want to kind of understand it better. Like what is web personalization? Yeah, yeah. So, well, why don't we just talk about some of the things that make a bad personalized shopping experience now, okay? Some of the bad things now that people are doing are pop-ups. So you get to a website, you're there maybe a few seconds, you see a pop-up and they're like, hey, give us your email, we'll give you a 10% off or 20% off coupon, right? Now, to the, uh, to the website, to the brand, they may think that's great. We get an email, now we can also try to cross sell them or nurture them through email marketing and they're in our database. But the problem with that is that that customer is never going to want to pay full price after they know that, Hey, I just went to your website and I was there a few seconds. I got a 20% discount. So that is a bad experience for the customer as well as the brand you're, you're eating. I have felt that same way, by the way, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to get a discount. Great. (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, you'll get it. Great. Right. But then if you ever go back, you're going to start looking for more coupons and more discounts because you know that you don't have to do anything all the time. Yeah. You know, that that's one example. Uh, another bad example is an irrelevant uh, product or landing page. So you click on an ad, you're thinking that you're, you're clicking on a specific product, specific value propositions. You get to the landing page and the messaging there has nothing to do with the ad that you clicked on. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the brand was just really good at enticing you to click on it. It's kind of like a clickbait. And then you get to the, the shopping page and they're trying to sell you something else. Maybe it wasn't bad intentions, but it's just not a good continuation of the ad experience to the actual website experience. So that's another bad example. Right. Uh, and then maybe maybe another bad example is just if you're shopping and uh, you've got visitors from a foreign country, you know, I'm, I'm based in Europe right now. But if I go to a U.S. shopping site, you know, I probably have a lot of questions. Do they ship here to Romania? Uh, if they do, uh, you know, how much do they charge? Um, you know, I just have tons of questions. And we have a user, uh, not a user, but a customer who really big e-commerce store based in the States. They recognize this problem. They started using our platform. And uh, now whenever they get shoppers or visitors from outside countries, You know, person gets there to the site, they're there for a few seconds, and they have this nice little side message that appears, and it says, hey, welcome, Romania visitor. Uh, By the way, we ship to Romania. Uh, By the way, uh, the currency that you'll be shopping in is Romanian lei, which makes it easier on you. Uh, If you spend more than 500 lei, you know, the, uh, the, the, the shipping charge is free. And so... It's it's wow. beautiful. It's a beautiful experience yeah. for visitors that are not based in the States, but don't really know if they even ship to where they're located. But then a few seconds, that trust in that brand has increased tremendously. And so that's one example of you know a good personalized shopping experience, just based on where the person is. You don't know nothing else about them, but you know where they're coming from. Let's give them a really nice welcome here and a, a nice experience to start off with. I love it. I love it. And a lot of the market may not get this. I mean, it's new, it's kind of different and unique. How are you educating your market so that they know, hey, this is something that we need to be thinking about? Yeah, well, we're starting to do it right now. I mean, I'm talking I'm talking with you right now. Uh, Perfect. To- <laughs> There's millions and billions around the world are now going to know about it thanks to this show. Yeah, no, but we have, we've been creating a lot of content, uh, a lot of short videos on YouTube. That, that's been our primary driver. That's great. Um, and then obviously we do a lot of case studies based on our customers and whenever they're using our product in a way that we know would be beneficial for other users to learn about. Uh, we speak, speak with our customers all the time and we always ask them, okay, can, can we do a joint use case with you? Um, so those have been the two primary ways. Uh, but now we're reaching out to podcasting um, as, as another way we're going to. Tr- and then also, I think, in-person events. We're going to try to start speaking at some events as well. As you know, because of COVID, we haven't really been uh, pursuing in-person events. But I think that's going to change next year. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the events are coming back. I just had a client who went and uh, did an event, spoke at the event, and got a ton of business out of it. He's super excited. So I think it is coming back. I'm glad you guys are doing that. Sounds like you're you're getting your name out there. And I think that's wise. Well done. Um, yeah. I want to I want to talk about some actionable steps that listeners can take so that they can create really more delightful and surprising web experiences. What are some things that they can do? 
Yeah, I mean, the first thing that I that I recommend is if you're just using pop-ups right now and trying to get an email address and get, you know, for a coupon or discount offer, I would recommend experiment and try something else. And here's two other things that you can try. One, try an exit intent pop-up instead. And um, basically what that is, is when a person is about to leave your site or close the browser, a pop-up appears. And then you can say, oh, you know, wait, have you seen our, you know, latest products or have you seen our newest collection? Or, you know, would you like a 10% off coupon? So stop, stop using your generic pop-ups that are just offering a discount to every type of person and then experiment by, by trying an exit and trend, uh, exit intent trigger pop-up. Um, so that's number one. Number two is, so we have this client called Blendjet. And they make these awesome blenders, but their blenders are known for like four separate things. They're known for one, their portability. You can, you know, you transport them everywhere. Two, easily chargeable. Three, uh, they're pretty powerful. I mean, they're not going to charge, you know, something hard like batteries or something. They're not going to blend that up, but they're pretty powerful. Um, and then they're also known for, for another unique uh, thing that I just can't remember now. But they do a lot of their business now through Facebook ads. And so instead of creating multiple landing pages for different ads that they're running, they're able to bring those UTM parameters from their Facebook ad campaign into Optimunk. And so if a person clicks on an ad that's specifically talking about the ease of uh, portability, now when they click on that ad and they go to the landing page, the main headline is going to be around portability. Wow. Right? Right. Cool. So bringing that same value proposition in from the ad into your landing page and then tying that that headline to the ad is the, the number big. It's probably the, the biggest thing that I recommend for brands out there that are doing paid ads on Google or Facebook to try. It's it's a no brainer, very simple to use with the Optimum platform, and uh, it's going to actually reduce your cost per acquisition considerably uh, once you start doing that. Yeah, I mean, that seems a lot easier than building a million different landing pages, trying to get uh, everything just right and hoping it works. And sometimes it doesn't. I hate when I get to a page, and I'm like, this is nothing what the ad talked about. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing, I'm no GA, GA expert, um, but if you have Google Analytics, it's very simple to go in there and uh, see where your users are coming from, your visitors are coming from by source, and just look at which source has the lowest bounce rate or uh, you know highest cost per acquisition. And uh, okay, look at that source. Maybe your source are visitors from a certain country. Uh, you know, maybe you know, maybe you're now serving people in Australia or Canada, right? But that bounce rate is pretty pretty low. And so you can start experimenting there, where you can actually put a little message on that specific page. Ask a question: Are you able to find what you're looking for? Or if they're, you know, it's it's the page specifically for Canada, you can put that little side message that says. Oh, welcome, you know, Canadian, you know, visitor or, or friend, Canadian friend. Uh, by the way, we ship there. Uh, there's no shipping charges above X amount and your shopping experience can be in Canadian dollars. And so start experimenting by looking at the segments based on location or even by source. So if you've, you're getting a ton of traffic from different social media channels and maybe you've got a decent cost per acquisition from Facebook, but you notice that your cost per acquisition from Instagram is pretty high, then that's a, that's a page or that's an experience that you want to start experimenting with. And uh, you can just do a little welcome message to your Instagram visitors and uh, try to figure out why. Try to collect some survey feedback from them by saying, you know, what is it you're looking for? And then that way you get feedback and then you can make adjustments on that specific page. Very, very cool. I love that. So this is a great tips. What are, what are marketers getting wrong when it comes to their website, Eric? What, what are they doing that that's not helping them. I think they're looking for like the perfect messaging, the perfect headline, you know, or the perfect graphic. And they think, oh, this is fantastic. And they'll do an A-B experiment. Oh, and this is the headline that's working really well. And they, they figure they found the winning headline. The problem is, is that there's not one winning headline for all segments, mm. right? You have different segments of customers. I mean, we uh, if you're a B2B you know, brand and maybe you're really focusing on maybe three niches, you know, maybe healthcare, uh, maybe cybersecurity, and maybe some other sort of niche, right? Well, 
that headline is not going to speak to those. It's not going to, it's not going to speak the same, you know, it's not going to be the same on the same level for all those three different inter- industries mm-hmm. and those three types of personas. So no matter what you think is the winning headline, it's not the winning headline for other segments that are maybe coming to your website and looking for your product. Right. And so with the platform, you know, based on industry, based on location, based on channel, you can craft different messaging that's going to appear uh, for that type of niche audience. Another thing that I think um, web marketers get wrong are just showing logos of enterprise clients. And if you're a startup or if you're a smaller company and you go to that website and you say, oh, wow, you know, these are just big companies that they work with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm probably not a good customer for them. And all I of say a this sudden, to my <laughs> clients all the time. I, I tell them you've got to make your your stories or your case studies relevant. So just like that, if you're if you're a small, you know, growing company and you see like Coca-Cola and Google on the on the list of clients, you're like, well, maybe they only serve the big ones. But also yeah. vice versa. If you're one of the big Fortune 500s and you see little tiny companies you never heard of, it's not going to work either. So I, I totally agree, Eric. Yeah, got to have a good mixture on there. I also think video testimonials is is really important um, because, you know, people just, they're just much more believable. They're genuine, they're mm-hmm. authentic. And so you want to have a couple of those on there as well as your text testimonials as well. So those are a few of the things that, that people are getting wrong. Um, but then the, the main one though, is just trying to figure out or misbelieving that, oh, I have the perfect headline that's going to appear to, you know, perfect to all the different segments I'm trying to attract. I love the one about video testimonials. I've seen studies in that if you just have text testimonials on your site, it's not going to resonate. It's not going to 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 really make an impact. In fact, people think that they might have been made up. And like you said, video testimonials are the most true. Uh, by the way, anybody out there who wants to see how I structure my testimonials, you can go to mattwallach.com slash reviews, mattwallach.com slash reviews, and you'll see all the video testimonials. It's video, 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 because it's you can't fake that and people see that they think that's true it's real and they also think if somebody was willing to spend the time to go through and film a video then they must have really gotten a lot of benefit out of it so excellent advice there eric i completely agree yeah yeah and then the other thing too is just you know returning visitors that come back to your website um just you know they they should be served a different experience they should see different content that you know they already saw uh that's another big one that i think marketers miss as well yeah, great advice. So what are some of the best tactics you guys are using to grow for your company? What, what, what How are you guys making it happen? Oh, so w- with us, testimonials and case studies with our best clients is the thing that we've been really focused on, creating that 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 content, that partnership content with our best customers, the best agencies that use OptiMonk. Um, that's been really working well for us. You know, we get so much out of that. We get the testimonial, we get the content that we can turn into a blog or even a short video. And so we've been, uh, we've been really focusing on that. I think that's fantastic. I'm a big believer in that and uh, ourselves as well. We, excuse me, we take that testimonial, create a blog out of it. We create a uh, social post out of it on LinkedIn and Twitter. We create an email out of it. And those emails, by the way, if you really want to drive results from your email list, email testimonials are so strong. Just tell the story, just explain like they were here. Now they went through, through they used this product or they did this and now they're here. It's, it's incredible how well that can work. So I, I totally agree with you on that, Eric. Yeah. I need to do that for my own podcast. <laughs> I have owned my own le- newsletter, but I never thought about putting testimonials in there. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's super powerful. We, we use it all the time for our coaching business. So uh, this is this is really some some slick stuff. I want to kind of you know see if we can filter. You've got a new software leader who's listening to us right now. What advice would you give to them? And they say, "Hey, I want to I want to make some of this happen. What do they need to do?" Okay, so if they're just a small company, and what I mean by small is less, you're getting less than five thousand visitors a month, then. The platform, you're probably not going to benefit too much from. We do have a free trial, uh, a free version, and it doesn't really matter how small your website or how small your traffic is, and you can still use it. But I would recommend that you just serve a simple question or have a little box that just asks one question. Uh, Were you able to find what what you were looking for? 
right? And that's if you have less than 5,000 visitors a month, because I think you're going to get really good feedback. And based on that feedback, you're going to be able to act on that. But if you have a website that's getting more than 5,000 visitors a month, then that's when you can start doing a lot more of the experimentation. Uh, use, utilizing the tools that OptiMonk has, we make it super easy to do A-B experiments and then also test different messages with different pop-ups, but then also do segmentation from the different types of visitors that you have. And those visitors could be returning customers. There could even be VIP customers. So you can tag those VIP customers into your CRM, pass that data over into OptiMonk. And if you want to just show like a little side message to your VIP customers that says, hey, we're releasing a new this new feature soon, you know, feel free to check it out for, you know, uh, just 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 for your eyes only or something like that. Or invite your VIP customers to a webinar. You can have a little message put on the website uh, for that. So again, above 5,000 visitors, those are some really cool. There's some really cool things that you could be, you could be doing with with the platform. Another cool thing that we have is this little um, this little feature where a person starts filling out a form. But then they get sidetracked. Maybe the baby's crying in the the room, and they go get the baby, and then they forget what they're doing, and they lost you know track of time. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we have this thing where if a person has been idle, they started completing a form, but they didn't finish it, and they've been idle a long time. Then we have like this little message that kind of follows them on the website, and it's just a little nice message that says, "Hey, we saw you've been idle for a long time. Do you need any help?" You know, and. Yeah, it's pretty cool because that can that basically can just tie into um, into your your little chat widget that you have, and uh, you can chat with them or they can reach out to you if they need any help. But that's a cool little feature that we have as well. Yeah, that's super slick. Very very cool. Well, how can everybody learn more about Optimunk and, and what you're doing there, Eric? Yeah, so I want to say that you know a lot of people with this personalization platform, right? Just because you activate it, it doesn't mean it's set up. Like Google Analytics, a lot of people activate GA. It doesn't really mean it's set up. You know, there's some reporting that you may want to set up so that way there's a story to the data. Well, we have this uh, personalization uh, guide, this roadmap where we share over 30 cases of how you can implement personalization strategy and tactics mm -hmm. uh, based on UK use cases that we have from our own customers, and it shows you step by step, step by step on what to do, how to do it. Go to optimunk.com. Um, I believe it's on the homepage. If you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see like get the uh, you know personalization platform roadmap, and uh, you can download it there. And uh, that's what I re would recommend as the next step is uh, check that out. Learn more about it. Okay, perfect. And we'll also put links on there for uh, everybody watching and listening, so they can get there. Eric, this has been awesome. Thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing all this. Hey, my pleasure, Matt. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Glad to have you. And everybody else, thank you for coming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Make sure you are subscribed to the show. You do not want to miss out on any other creators and leaders like Eric. So hit that subscribe button right now. That way you'll be notified so that you can get all the best information. Thanks very much for coming, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care.